here is my 2019 hackable badge. Here you go, make something unexpected, 2019-3, because it's revision 3, and it's a double-sided badge. It's not an overly complex badge to build. It's all 0805 LEDs at the front, and 0805 resistors and caps at the back. There's a, a tiny 85, a push-button switch and a slide switch, connectors for a pin if you want to pin it onto yourself, a battery connector, and a header over here to connect the programming interface if you've ordered one of those. And of course, the most complicated part on the board is this LED driver on the top here, which is a, a TSOP32. So it's got 32 pins and it's a fairly fine pitch. It's definitely solderable by hand. You might want to use a little bit of flux when you do it. You'll have to definitely use some flux cleaner at the end <laughs> when you're finished. But yeah, this is the badge. So I'm going to now assemble one and show you how easy it is to do. Here we go. Okay, I've got the lighting turned up quite high because it's a blackboard, so it's kind of hard to see the detail. And I've put it on a turntable for me to work off. So we're going to start off by placing the little LED driver, which sits in the middle. You can see over here that there's a, a pin 1 indicator for the driver, and the chip itself has a little LED indicator, pin 1, just there. So we need to turn it around. What I'm going to do is put some flux down, because it's much easier to solder these on with some flux. I'm using some Amtec flux. It's quite a large syringe, so I'm just going to apply it just with a tip of a toothpick, a bit larger than a toothpick. It doesn't really matter how much flux you get at this point. You just want enough that you can deal with the, the solder bridges later. Now, we're not worrying about the, the pad on the bottom. It doesn't need to have anything on it. Okay. A little bit more. We'll be cleaning all this off afterwards, so that's fine. Excellent. So let's get the driver on the correct way. Okay, I'm now going to attempt to put it in place. Looks sort of okay. Do a bit of a drag along it. Hope we've got enough flux. I think we might have got a little bridge. Let's get a bit more flux on there. Okay, I think we're good. Cool. So now let's move on to the LEDs. So we're going to tin one pad of each LED. Doesn't really matter which one. I probably should do the one closest to me. So I'm right-handed. So when I use my tweezers, okay, cool. Okay, all the LEDs have a little green end on them that show where the negative side or the, the cathode is. If I can get it off my tweezers, that'd be good. Of course, all the remaining LEDs are upside down. It'd be nice if they all righted themselves for me. I could hope that they would recognize that I'm trying to record a video teaching everyone how to assemble the board. They could at least capitulate, don't you think? Might have counted wrong. I've got three more LEDs over here. Does that mean I've got three more to place? Have I missed one? I think I've got them all. I might have taken out too many LEDs. It's quite possible. Let's now put a solder on the other sides. 
Now, if I was building this for myself and not for a video, I would probably be looking underneath a magnifying glass for this just to make my life easier. Of course, I can't do that with the camera in the way. I think that is all of them. We'll find out when we light it up. Okay. Some of the LEDs aren't the straightest, but that's pretty good. Let's now move on to the back. Okay, we're now on the back and everything on the side is a little bit bigger. So it's gonna make it a bit easier, I hope. Let's start off with getting the Tiny 85 on. I'm just going to tin a pad, just like that. I'm gonna get the Tiny 85 on. Make sure it's the right way. Again, you've got a little dot for pin zero, or pin one, I should say, sorry, and then the marker on the chip. Okay, just see if we can move it over just a fraction. As I said, I'm not looking down from the top, so it's a bit harder for me to see if I'm on or not, but I think I am. We could use some flux, but probably don't need to. It's pretty good. Let's go back this side. Okay, nice. Saving my best work to last. While we're here, I'm just going to tin these passives. It's one of the button positions, and I'm gonna tin probably just that pad there for the switch. Let's get this button on. Board's not sitting perfectly steady because I've got obviously the LED driver in the middle. Might move around a little bit. Okay, it's our button. Let's go back and put our passives on. So we've got a 10 microfarad cap, which is C1, or is it C2? Doesn't really matter in this case. And we've got a 0.1 that goes next to it. So it doesn't matter which one goes first. We have another point one, just over here. We have a 5.1K resistor just next to it. And then we have three 10K resistors over here. Now I can't see if I'm putting these on the right way in terms of the label orientation. I apologize. I can't see from this distance. So if there's anyone watching that's got OCD, I apologize now. Okay, now this switch, as I said, might be tricky because it's got to be aligned into the holes. So I'll see what I can do. Oh, no, there you go, straight in. Perfect. Okay, now I just need to finish off the passives. So let's do those first and then I'll finish off the switch. The legs on the switch are quite small. Okay, just three left. This is the back here, which are the most important ones. The four on the side are just to give it mechanical strength these three here for the actual switch. Okay, so that is the back of the board other than the programming header which we'll have to put on. The ATtiny 85 will come pre-programmed with some displays on there to animate the, the front of the badge. But for those of you that have ordered the programming header, you'll still get the pre-programmed ATtiny 85 but you'll be able to obviously change the code. And there'll be some code available in GitHub that you can download and have a, a play with. So last thing we need to do is put this header on and then in this case this Tiny85 isn't pre-programmed. I'll put some code on it and we'll see if it works. Let's do that. Okay, here is the programming connector. So it is a six pin header and then you also get a cable that has the six pins going out to DuPont. It makes it easy to plug into a programmer. Okay, so let's turn it around. Let's get these pads tinned. They're nice and big, so it's super easy. Excellent. Okay, and the connector's also got some mechanical strength pads on the side, so you want to just get those as well. That gives it a lot more strength for when you're pulling the cable in and out. So, we should be able to plug this into a programmer now and flash the AT-Tiny 85, even without the battery, because you'll be able to power the whole thing from the programmer. And we'll see if I got all my LED orientations correct. I may not have, so I'm telling you right now. But the point of this exercise is to show you how to assemble the badge. If I got something the wrong way around, and you might get something the wrong way around, well then you just go and turn them around again. So let's see how this goes, shall we? I have my programmer. It's a Palulu AVR programmer. I quite like theirs. Palulu USB AVR programmer 2.1. So I've connected my cable to there. I'm going to plug this in to the 
programming header and when I plug it into the USB over here it's gone off. <laughs> I need something to hold it in place I'll do that in a second when I plug this in nothing really is going to happen I don't believe because oh we had a bit of a blue flash as I plugged it in but there's no code on there yet now I've darkened off the visuals a bit so you'll be able to see the LEDs they're super bright though but you'll be able to see them let me flash one of the demo programs on it you'll probably see it flicker while it's programming there we go and there we go it's flashed how cool is that let me just get a bit closer if I can So the LED driver chip has full PWM support. So as you can see, I'm PWMing the outside. They're going in and out while I'm flashing the insides in and I'm doing a bit of a rotation blink. So I've got a few different demos, a few different bits of source code that you can put on the badge. So that's just one of them. Here's another one. You see it flicker when it's programming and that's just lighting up all the different quadrants of the badge and it's fading out the previous ones so you can see there's a bit of a trail going on behind it here's another one I think this could be my favorite again you can see the trail on the outside using the PWM of the chip so this is all running off power from the programmer just a, a 3 volts coming in but of course if you put the battery on the back it'll just run off that how long will the battery last? Well, it really depends on how bright the LEDs are, what you're doing, what it's running. The on switch is getting bypassed right now, over here, because it's coming through the programmer. The on switch turns the battery connector on and off. Ooh, nice bluey glow behind, isn't it? So anyway, there you go. The Unexpected Maker Badge 2019. Available in Tindy now. Link below. So... You can buy the badge as a full kit, with or without the programming cable and connector. So if you don't want to program it, it'll just come with maybe this bit of code on it. And there's also an option to buy it with the LED driver already on the board. So if you don't feel like soldering the LED driver, I'll put that on for you. And then the rest you can do yourself. Lastly, the board is available with blue LEDs, green LEDs, white LEDs, red LEDs, orange LEDs, and pink LEDs. All the LEDs, there's no difference in price except for the pink ones. A little bit more expensive because they're very hard to get. So yeah, there you go. Unexpected Maker 2019 badge, finally available, almost at the end of 2019. And finally, as promised, here's the final board that's been cleaned. I'll put the battery clip on the back. Depending on the type of battery you use, you might need to also put some solder on the main pad on the bottom for the negative point of the battery. I'm using IKEA batteries and they've got this weird surface on them. It's got like a, a plasticky cover or something, whatever it is, the surface stops it from making nice contact. So I've just put a little tiny bit of solder underneath. So let's just load up the battery now. It slides right in, turn it over and turn it on and there it is just turning the lighting thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and if you have make sure you please click the alarm bell to be notified when i have new videos coming out to all my patrons thank you very much you're awesome and until next time catch you later bye